Hi, I'm Cynthia Clark. As a soulmate palmist, I've discovered a system using hand analysis to identify your soulmate matches. Greater love is possible for you. There are six keys to soulmate attraction. There are 10 heart chambers in your hands that show you exactly what you need to heal. I can help you untangle dating confusion and work with the vibrational energy to change your vibration. True love exists for you if you claim it. Join me at loveinyourhands.com and find soulmate love fast. Hi, I'm Cynthia Clark. As a soulmate palmist, I've discovered a system using hand analysis to identify your soulmate matches. Greater love is possible for you. There are six keys to soulmate attraction. There are 10 heart chambers in your hands that show you exactly what you need to heal. I can help you untangle dating confusion and work with the vibrational energy to change your vibration. True love exists for you if you claim it. Join me at loveinyourhands.com and find soulmate love fast. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Cynthia Clark, and I am a soulmate palmist and spiritual teacher. You can find me over at loveinyourhands.com. And today I am excited to talk about love and why is it eluding you. So this is a topic that will actually come back to our hands. And our hands actually tell us all sorts of information about us. So they reflect who we are on all different levels of ourselves. And a lot of people struggle with finding love. And this is not something to be taken lightly if you really want to find love you know you should want to know why you haven't found it yet right so there is an aspect of of the hands that i would just talk about its commitment so if you are not committed to actually going through the steps that are required for you to find love, then you're not going to find love. So what do I mean by commitment? Okay, well, first of all, you need to be committed to the idea of love. You need to know that love exists, and you need to know that it exists for you. And that your soulmate is looking for you as much as you are looking for them. So this is an important uh, aspect of commitment. So I want you just to, to ask yourself, you know, if you're single out there, how committed are you to love itself? Okay. So the second aspect of commitment has to do with commitment to finding love. Okay, so you need to take steps every day to find love, right? It, you can't just expect it to drop into your living room <laughs> um, necessarily, right? You, there are steps that you need to take. 
And you also need to be committed to keep going even when you've had failures. So this is one of the biggest keys actually to success in general is that you need to be able to handle failure, handle rejection, handle frustration, and you need to be committed to keep going. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with, right? It it doesn't feel good when you get hurt. It doesn't feel good when you get rejected or if you feel like nobody is out there to love you. Uh, it's not a, not a pleasant place to be. And I've definitely been there. <laughs> so I, I understand your frustration. But this is where the thumb comes in. Okay, so what I want you to do is actually take a look at your very own hands because your hands will show you the quality of your commitment level. Okay, so your thumb represents your willpower. Okay, so the bigger, the longer, the stronger your thumb is, the more energy you have in commitment. Okay, so oftentimes you will see a big thumb on people who are CEOs, people who are risk takers, people who have gone through some adversity and come out the other side. Okay, and so take, and you might be wondering, well, how do I know if my thumb is big? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's a good question. The first thing you want to do is put your thumb next to your index finger and see how long it is. Okay, so it will be considered long if it comes up over the halfway point in the lower phalange of your index finger. Okay, so if it's just reaching like the halfway point, Okay, so we're looking at this lower phalange. If it's just re barely reaching the halfway point, that means it is average. If it's longer than that, then it is considered long. And if it doesn't reach up the halfway point, it is considered short. Okay, so if you have a shorter thumb, that means that your willpower is actually lower or less than average. Okay, so this is a tangible way to actually measure it out. Okay, by the way, um, if you happen to be one of these people with a short thumb, that does not mean you cannot strengthen it. So we're going to talk about that before the end of uh, today's show. Okay, so the next thing I want you to take a look at is how stiff is your thumb. Okay, so the stiffer your thumb is, the more committed you are and the stronger your willpower. Okay, so how we measure stiffness is we take the thumb and we bend it back towards the wrist. Okay, so literally we bend it backwards and we see how much does it actually bend. Some people will be really floppy and you'll actually be able to bend it very easily. Some people can go all the way back <laughs> to their wrist. Um, you'll actually see that on young people. It's actually not uncommon to see it on young people. And other people, you may notice, they don't bend at all. Uh, my husband is one of these people. His thumb doesn't bend. <laughs> so very, uh, what I would call persevering energy. And sure enough, he's survived some, some real hardships. And um, that can happen when you need to be really strong in your willpower, right? But this definitely applies to commitment, not just in love, but in, in all of life. So if you want to start strengthening your thumb, there is an exercise that I actually recommend doing. And it is stretching it away from your index finger, okay? So if you just have, have your hands kind of just gently 
you know, just open, right? And if you take a look at, okay, well, how far away does my thumb naturally rest away from the rest of my fingers? So for some people, it'll naturally rest way far away, right? They'll have this big open space. And for other people, they want to kind of hug their, the rest of the fingers. They want to have them tight like this. So if all your fingers are tight and closed up, that actually represents closed up energy. So love could be eluding you because you are literally closed off. So you don't have the commitment, okay? So we want to start to open up our fingers and feel how good that feels when you start to open them up. Uh, I did a reading just the other day for somebody and it was the first time I had met her as well. And she had her fingers kind of curled in just a little bit. And so I knew that she didn't really trust me and she wasn't really open to having me read her even though she, you know, she said she was open, <laughs> but I could tell that she was nervous about it and, and she really wasn't because her, that's what her hand was telling me. And so I always read, you know, hand gestures and the way the fingers lay out, it absolutely plays into your openness and your commitment. So once these fingers open up, spread that thumb out, open it up, uh, that is going to actually help you if you have a short thumb or a weak or just flexible thumb. Okay, so just go ahead, open up your hands, close them up, open them, close them, open them, and close them. And just feel how that feels. Feel that in your body. Feel the difference, right, when we close our hands versus when we open our hands. And if you are looking for love, I highly recommend that you start doing this as a daily exercise and you start stretching out that thumb, especially that willpower. We got to increase that commitment. So another thing you want to check is the phalanges actually on your thumb. And a lot of people think that there's only two phalanges and that's actually in quite a lot of palmistry books. Um, However, I disagree with that. I say there are actually three, uh, just as there are on all of the fingers. And there's just so much variation in the thumb that sometimes it may appear that there's only two or it may appear that they're, um, you know, they, they, they just have so much variation. <laughs> okay, so you may, you may think there's only two, but there's actually three. And so you can think of this as your, your ready, aim, fire energy. Okay, so the lower section of the thumb, in other words, the part that is closest to your, um, your palm, that is your ready section. Okay, it also corresponds to your throat chakra. So you can see the quality of that. And it should be roughly half the size of the middle section. Okay, so the middle section is your aim and your upper section, the section with your fingernail is your fire. Okay, so you can tell how much ready aim and fire power you have based upon the sizes of each of those sections. Okay, another thing you can check for is the lines that run through your thumb. Okay, if you have horizontal lines that run across your thumb, it's oftentimes seen in the fire power section or the crown chakra. Your middle section is your third eye. So if you have horizontal lines running through your thumb, then that tells me that you worry too much and you're probably not able to manifest what you want. And there could be any number of reasons that are blocking you. We would look at other sections of your hand, but it is definitely shows it shows up as a block. And another common place to see, uh, you know, challenges would be in this middle section of the thumb, and the middle section is your 
aim section. You can also think of it as planning. This is your planning part of your hand. And a lot of times this section will be too big. And meaning that it kind of overpowers either the throat chakra or the crown chakra. And it's it actually shows up as a really big section. So, or it'll have a bunch of horizontal lines that run through it. And in either case, that is going to show up as a stress. And it's going to show that you're stuck in planning. And, you know, we have to know when to execute. Okay, so our willpower needs to be, you know, we, we need to know we're committed. We need to get ready for that. We need to look at the inner game. And trust me, the inner game is everything. I'd say 95% of finding a partner is inner game work. And then we need to direct ourselves. You know, how are we showing up in the world? What are we doing? What are we actually committed to? So the, to answer that question, you have to look at your life on a daily basis. What do you think about when you get up in the morning? What's the first thing that you think about? What do you do after you get up? You know, what are you committed to? The The actual actions that you take throughout the day are what you are actually committed to. So if you're committed to love, well, then you should have mostly loving thoughts throughout the day. And if you're not committed to love, you're probably either complaining <laughs> or you're feeling like a victim or maybe you're... Uh, frustrated, you might be angry, you might be um, grumbling, you know, all of these things actually show that you're not committed to love. So in order to turn that around, you need to start changing the way that you think, changing the way that you feel, and changing the way that you act and show up. And all of this relates to how your thumb shows up. <laughs> okay. And the cool thing is too, is you can start to see changes in your very own hands over time. So you might see your thumb stiffen, for example, as you start to work with it and do those exercises like I was describing. Uh, you might actually see some of the lines disappear. That's definitely something that I've seen over the years. I used to have a ton of horizontal lines in my upper phalange. And I used to worry about everything. I was a worry wart. <laughs> and how did, I, how did I change that? Well, it took a commitment on my part to recognize that my life was not where I wanted it to be. And then I started to work on my inner game. I started to go inward. I started to pay attention to what my thoughts were. I started to pay attention to what my feelings were. And once I recognized some of the challenges that I was having, I started to shift them. And the only way to shift them is to focus on love. This is one of the laws of love. You got to focus on love. You got to believe in love in order to enter into the realm of love. So this is my advice for you today. If love is eluding you, uh, I want you to take a good close look at your thumb. Take a good close look at, at what you are actually committed to. Uh, what steps do you take every day? You know, you need to believe that love is, is out there. It's out there for you. It's coming closer every single day. You got to start thinking, what would love do? This is a good question I ask all the time. What would love do? And once you can answer that, that th that's the step you should take. Okay. So I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you have a beautiful thumb. <laughs> and if not, um, I hope that your blockages disappear. Uh, by the way, another thing that you can do with your thumb is you can start to actually run your nail vertically up your thumb. So if you do have a lot of blockages, this is something that I recommend. So just actually run your nail right up your thumb and say, you can even say, I am opening up my commitment energy. I am a strong manifester. I am able to create the life that I want. 
I am attracting soulmate love. You know, all of these things are good, solid intentions and they hold power and they actually work from the hands as a circuit back into your brain. So if you give that a try and if you actually start to practice it, you will start to see some shifting and you may even see some of those lines disappear. So I have an all new masterclass that I want to talk about. And if you're interested, you can just go to loveinyourhands.com and sign up. It's actually a live class that I'm doing. It's called Ignite Soulmate Love, How to Ignite Soulmate Love. And I go into a lot of details on how you can ignite soulmate love in your own life. It's super fun. It's interactive. It's live with me. And I'm doing it now uh, on a regular basis so you can go in and sign up. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is that I am shifting the format of the show. So if you want to have, uh, if you want to share a story about your own relationship experience, whether you're single or not, whether you're divorced or not, whether you're uh, homosexual or heterosexual or bisexual, uh, doesn't matter to me. I like to hear everybody's stories. And then we can look at your hands on the show and discover who you are and how it interplays in your life. Uh, I am also happy to answer some questions. If you have any questions about a relationship or uh, just needing some advice, um, I also do uh, tarot cards and, and other types of oracle cards. And I'd be happy to pull some cards for you on the show. So um, just go to loveinyourhands.com forward slash podcast uh, if you want to either submit a question or if you want to be a guest on the podcast. So thank you so much for joining me today. Have a fantastic day. And remember that life has more meaning when it's shared. This is Cynthia Clark signing off. Until next week.